Hey everyone, in today's video we're checking out the P2, a new thermal camera lent to us by Thermalmaster. We'll be putting it through some quick tests and comparing it to some well-known mobile thermal images often used in repair work. First, just to clear up any confusion, Thermalmaster is a new company formed by former members of Infrared. I have been told by a rep from Thermalmaster that the core technology of the sensor is the same, and thus quality is the same as before. Only time will tell. As always, my reviews are 100% my own opinion, with no inputs or screening from the manufacturer before release. I'll be comparing the Thermalmaster P2 to other mobile thermal cameras I've used in the past in a professional repair shop setting. Okay, to kick things off, let's take a look at the P2 specs. As of this recording, the P2 retails for around 200 US dollars, quite affordable for its capabilities. Plus, stick around until the end of the video for a discount code to bring the price down to just 186 US dollars. The P2 features a thermal resolution of 256 by 192 with a 12 micron pixel size and a spectral range of 8 to 14 microns. The larger pixel size should enhance thermal sensitivity, whereas spectral range refers to the range of electromagnetic wavelengths that the device can detect. For thermal imaging cameras, the spectral range defines the specific band of infrared wavelengths that the sensor is sensitive to. In this case, this device falls into the long wave infrared category, exactly what we need for repair related thermal imaging. As with other similar cameras, the P2 also offers an oversampling function which boosts the perceived thermal resolution in exchange for a significant frame rate drop. Speaking of thermal resolution, the P2 can operate in two measurement modes, which are low and high temperature. I'll go into more detail on this in a little bit. This thermal imager also operates at a 25 Hz refresh rate, and like other images we've looked at before, has an automatic recalibration every few seconds. For comparison, the Seek Compact Pro has a larger thermal resolution of 320 by 240, although the refresh rate is limited to just 15 Hz, or 15 FPS. This limited refresh rate also is prone to causing issues in certain situations. The P2 also has a claimed defining thermal sensitivity as low as 40 mK. This sounds very impressive when compared to the Seek, which is only stated at less than 70 mK. A quick note here, defining thermal sensitivity is an alternate term for noise equivalent temperature difference, or NETD for short. This is a measure for how effectively a thermal imaging sensor can differentiate slight variations in thermal radiation. In this case, lower the number, the better. Having said that, 40 mK for an uncooled microbolometer appears to be better than average. We'll be coming back to check on the real world performance in just a little bit. Now, sliding over to the physical aspects of the P2 for a moment, this thing truly is tiny, coming in at just 31 by 21 by 9.8 mm, making it the second smallest thermal camera currently on the market which, yes, is the tagline for this product. The housing is made from a matte finish alloy, with the only negative being the lens assembly. On the standard P2, unlike the Pro, there is no protective cover over this lens. The module is at least recessed, however, I can see this being a hotbed for dust and debris. You see, these convex lens assemblies, much like the ones used in mobile phones, need some kind of protection as over time dust will build up around the edge of the outer element and become very hard to clean. It would have been really nice to have the option to upgrade the camera with a macro lens, much like the P2 Pro has, or at the very least, some kind of ingress mitigation. Unlike the Seek Compact Pro, the P2 sadly doesn't have any kind of manual focus. Instead, the camera is set to a fixed focus with a minimum focus distance of about 15 centimeters. Currently, the P2 is available in a Type-C version, and ships with a 30 centimeter USB-C extension cable and this handy little clamshell case. Jumping over to the software now, as of filming, the P2 has an Android app, but no iOS or PC companion software. On the website, there is a PC companion software that is shown in the photos, but I can't find any links to download it anywhere on the product page. However, it looks like it may have compatibility with third-party PC software such as IRCAM. Jumping over to the companion software, we have some handy repair-related functions. My favorite one would have to be the bounding box function. 
This allows you to place up to three boxes of any size on the screen and get an average, max and minimum temperature readings for each box. Another handy feature is the point read overlay. Much like the bounding box, you can place three of these on the screen at once and have a measurement for each point. Aside from that, you have the standard thermography options like emissivity settings or adjusting for different surfaces like PCBs or metals, for example. You also have a bunch of color palettes to apply as well as both photo and video capture with picture in picture. As mentioned before, the P2 can operate in two measurement modes. The default the app uses is the HQ mode or high quality, which has a temperature range of negative 20 to 150 degrees Celsius. While in this mode, if you measure over the maximum temperature, the camera will go into burn protect mode and video recording will pause. The second temperature mode is wide range mode. This has a scale of 150 to 600 degrees Celsius. However, there is a substantial drop in image quality in this mode. For electronics repair, the HQ range is more than enough to get the job done. Speaking of image quality, switching over to the oversampling mode seems to make the image quality actually worse somehow. You lose definition in a way that I just don't like. The lower resolution is still better compared to the Seek's much higher one, with the benefit coming from the higher refresh rates. As my use case is electronics repair, the main function for a thermal camera in my case is just to detect shorts. Sometimes faults are only present for a short period, as sometimes they are faults on secondary rails that go off quickly within the power on sequence. Low refresh rate images, like the Seek, are annoying for me to use, as you often miss these brief glimpses into what's going on, something that is easily mitigated by higher frame rates. So just to sum up, I think this is a great value thermal imager for both repair shops and hobbyist use, with a lean to hobbyists. The 25Hz refresh rate, although not the fastest, is still ample and even advantageous when compared to older, more expensive units like mentioned. I just wish there was a way to adjust the focus and some protection for the delicate lens assembly. Also, macro upgrade options would be nice. If you're interested in this camera, I've linked it down below with a discount code. And if you like this video and want more tool reviews, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, see ya.